the book Uvra. One of them apparently is. Great title. It's a collection of work, yeah, so it seems yeah. to be you know, appropriate. And I can't even read it from this one, so I'm going to go with this copy of a poem called Death. Did you say death? Death. Thanks. Death. <laughs> this is a poem called Death. What can you do after that? When he was a child, a little boy, he would walk through the living room over and over again. He would see the book on the shelf, a science book, a volume from a set, a book about how the world works. Once he looked through the pages, found a drawing about the life of planet Earth, how it was formed, how eventually the temperature would rise, all life on Earth would eventually die. And reading that it was millions of years away didn't help with the fear, the instant panic. So he took the book, hid the one volume from the rest, so he wouldn't have to see it when he walked through his own living room. Oh. <laughs> it's completely differently themed. It's called Signs, Signs of the Times. The president says it's okay to be gay as long as you don't tell anyone. Suburban husbands are murdering doctors who work at abortion clinics mm. because they save the world from a mass murderer. Nineteen children are found in a freezing apartment alone, sharing one bowl of food on the floor with a dog. People walk to the churches, see Mary's statue crying. One lone man in New York hears the voice of God through his dog yeah. and kills. Was that Son of Sam? Yes. Were the children saved from the murderer? No. Were they sharing their food with God? Mm. Were they crying? is something that I had uh, written a few weeks ago to uh, a request from Poetry Aloud. This never happened. And I read it live, but I don't think anybody's heard it live, so I'm going to share it with you. Utopia. This one is called Utopia Never Happened. The last thing I remember was making a left-hand turn at the car intersection in the middle of nowhere. There was no one for miles, but I suddenly saw the oncoming car careening straight toward me. All I could do is slam on my brakes and brace for impact. But I woke up in a strange bed, and I could hear health monitors. I think I was in a hospital room, but I had no idea where I was. I was mortified. <laughs> I rubbed my temple. I, I felt okay, maybe bruised, so I didn't know why I was here. And the last thing I wanted was doctors I didn't know telling me that I couldn't leave and leaving me trapped like a prisoner. I've been trapped like this before. I know this feeling all too well. I just wanted to be free. I worked all my life to gain my independence, to stand up for myself, to do what was right. And there was no way I wanted to be placed in a straitjacket and trapped in a hospital again. I was better than this. I had to be. I rubbed my temple as I carefully walked toward the closed door until the door opened. A man saw me and smiled. I'm glad to see you're doing well, he said, smiling. As I felt my blood begin to boil, I asked, Where am I? I think you could tell from my tone that I shouldn't be reckoned with, so he laid it all out for me. You got away from other people's with your car. When you were knocked out from that crash, a driver from the other side didn't make it, so we flew you here. You see, we've watched your work. You've got a lot of talent, and we've seen you fight every step of the way when you try to accomplish your goals. I think you understand how unfair the government can be, and we know you understand how those with the government's mentality will use any tactic other than reason to stop you as well. So, we thought we could save you from that, where you could work with your mind and be respected again. I just stared at him, but I think he saw the look in my eyes turn from an indicting stare to an incredulous gaze before I actually turned away in disbelief. I can tell you aren't interested, but others like you from around the world got fed up with fighting a system they couldn't beat. I had to stop him. 
where am I? My tone was almost threatening. We flew you to an island that no radar can detect, because here you can work and you won't be stopped. I wasn't stopped before, I answered, and how many hoops did you have to jump through to do it? He answered, which stopped me enough to think of how all I had fought for in my life was usually all to no good. We've seen your work, he started to say, now in a more relaxed tone than before. And because of that, we've started an account for you, for paying you for all of the good that you've done that you had never been paid for before. You can stay here with us, with other open minds that are open and eager to learn. I stared for a moment, knowing that I was taken here, but wondering if there was any truth in what he was saying. And maybe you will see that people here, once you see them, maybe you'll see that everyone here is worthy of respect. He waited for me to interject. I, I, I thought about the goals I had accomplished, and then I thought about how I had to fight everything, every step of the way to get anything done. I didn't interject. You could stay here as my guest, but I think you look forward to being here on your own. You'll be able to work at what you need to do, and you'll be paid fairly for your work. He, he paused again. But you need to rest. But please, sleep, and we'll talk in the morning. And with that, he left the room. I slowly sat down on the bed again. In a way, it sounded like it could be a dream come true, being free from the suppressing forces, having true independence to live the way I was meant to. I rubbed my temple again as I lay down in bed. I was brought here against my will, but wait a minute, maybe this could all be an intellectual utopia. All I could think was that this could be my chance to live with others from around the world that came to this one sacred place where we all would use our independent wills to actually bring us all together to be smarter and stronger and more free. I closed my eyes. I don't know how long my eyes were closed, but when I opened my eyes, I was in my own bed with my fingers still at my temple. I, I knew this couldn't be a dream, but here I am. And after I'm sure I heard this man's words, I want to believe that this respect, this freedom, this independence, this utopia, I, I can't believe that all of this, that this never happened. I want to believe that this respect, this freedom, this independence, that this utopia is just waiting for me to find it.